when, when I published my 1995 book, uh, The Killing of Robert F. Kennedy, uh, it, was the, it was the solution that I did not start with because I started with there were two guns, but I was wrong. I had written a book in 1978 called The Hoffa Wars, and it was about the rise and fall of Jimmy Hoffa. And in this book, I had alleged that Jimmy Hoffa, the president of the Teamsters Union, along with Carlos Marcello, a mafia guy, for, the mafia head from New Orleans, and Santo Traficante, the boss of the, San, of the Tampa, Florida mafia, had arranged and executed uh, John Kennedy's murder in 1963. And I believe that the reason why John Kennedy was murdered was because of his brother, Bob Kennedy, the attorney general's relentless assault on the mafia. I mean, when Bob Kennedy was was head of the Senate Rackets Committee in 1957 and 1960, I mean, he was eating mafia guys for breakfast. And then when he became attorney general, he started eating them for lunch and dinner, too. He was probably the greatest crime fighter ever. And so when Kennedy wound up dead... And I started looking at this in 1985, after being approached by Greg and Phil. I thought it was possible that Hoffa, Marcello, and Traficani had had put the contract out on him as well. Right, and, and, and uh, I, I know. And, but in my conclusion that Sirhan did it and did it alone, it's you know, it the, the mafia should have built a gigantic statue to this to this murderer uh, because he um, he really. Um, he really stopped the comeback of Robert Kennedy, who was going to finish the job against the mafia. Um, and, and, and I know with, with Bob Kennedy's death, in fact, the mafia just became supercharged once again. I, I know that I bet you uh, got a few questions in here. I'm just yammering on. Here. <laughs> no, I'm I'm listening. I'm fascinated. But uh, I know that uh, Caesar, you know, had some anti-Kennedy. Uh, you know, he's very overtly anti-Kennedy. So, uh, but did you see some connections between uh, Traficante and the mob and and Caesar? Did you see any way that the, that they would have been somehow related? I looked. I looked hard. I was a, I was a little concerned about. I I, um, I was concerned about. I had been hearing a lot of rumors about uh, Caesar was a plumber. That's was that was his trade. He has he has a high school diploma. And he has a couple of years of junior college without an associate degree. But he became a plumber, and he was a contract plumber at um, Hughes, Hughes Tool Company, I guess it was. And it was alleged that he had all these organized crime connections, and I just don't see it. I mean, I really, I mean, that's my specialty is organized crime. And I just, I just didn't see the connections to organized crime with him or with Sirhan when I went and I talked to Sirhan. I wanted to see whether Sirhan had these connections. I mean, if he was studied to be a jockey, there was there was one particular guy who we had connected to organized crime, a guy named Frank Donamura, a.k.a. Henry Ramastella, who was kind of close to Sirhan. In fact, Sirhan had mentioned him in those weird notebooks that he had written. RFK must die, and he was talking about Frank Donamura, owing him some money or something like that. And so that was that was suspicious. Um, but even uh, once again, I mean, Sirhan said to me, he said, listen, if there was a conspiracy, it probably would have unraveled by now. And I said, then why don't you just admit it? <laughs> why don't you submit that you did it? Because he, Sirhan's always thought that he was drunk that night. He's always said that he was drunk. He didn't remember anything. Mm -hmm. And, um, uh, I, I said, why don't you just admit it? He says, well, why should I admit it when there's people like you going out there and, and creating all of these exculpatory pillars for me to lean on. Uh, why should I admit it when there's evidence out there that says that I didn't do the crime? So, and then in, that's when I sort of figured out this is his angle. As long as there's guys like me out there who are coming up with this so-called new evidence um, of a second gunman, why should he? Why should he admit guilt? So the Sirhan and, Sirhan that we're seeing uh, in in and these... it was a very that final interview that we had was very very hostile. I, I I had gone up with his brother Adele Sirhan, a very fine person on all three interviews, and I said to him uh, when we were driving up to Corcoran State Penitentiary, which is where he was, and I said to Adele, I said, really, I'm going to get in his face about this because I'd had a conversation. It was, this is like in, my last interview with him was on June 5th, 1994, and the week before, I was in Los Angeles for the American Booksellers Convention. I was on a symposium about a litigation I was involved in, and um, I was having lunch with my editor, Star Lawrence, from W.W. W. Norton, 
and he said he had I had sent him 27 chapters of my book, which made it look like there was a conspiracy. And he said, I mean, I've read these 27 chapters. Fantastic, man. I'm absolutely convinced. Two guns in the room, and uh, Sirhan didn't do it, and Caesar did, and wow, man. And then I said, listen, uh, Star, and he goes, what? And I said, listen, I've been talking to Sirhan. And he said, and what? And I said, he may have done it, and he may have done it alone. And he said, what? And I said, yeah. I said, I'm going to have a third interview with him uh, this coming Sunday, June 5th, and, uh, which would have been, what, the uh, 26th anniversary of the murder. And I said, and then I'll, I'll know. And he pointed to me, and he said, you better make this work, because I, once again, I had turned in a conspiracy uh, proposal, book right. proposal. I had promised to deliver a conspiracy. And so, um, and they had actually st stapled it to my contract. I was afraid they were going to make me give back the seventy-five thousand dollars and everything else. But in the end, uh, what I did was, and, I w and once again, after that third interview on June fifth, nineteen ninety-four, I was convinced that Sirhan did it, did it alone, and that's the way I was going to write it. And so, my publisher thought that I had vindicated my integrity. Let me toot my own horn a little bit. He thought I had vindicated my by integrity. But he thought I was going to get slaughtered by the critics uh, because of my 180 cave, which is probably what it was. Uh, and um, and so I um, I wrote the book like a Columbo. I don't know if you remember that old show, oh, yeah. uh, that Detective Columbo, where you knew in advance who did it, and the adventure was not so much in a destination, but during the trip to get there. The book sold miserably uh, at the box office, but I got some. I got the greatest reviews of my life. Uh, for that book, I got uh, I got not one but two great reviews from the New York Times, uh, the Newsweek. Newsweek gave me a great one. The Washington Post that was a funny one. They had given me a review that was that uh, was written by a very distinguished British historian who claimed that he was in the crowd a few feet from the senator. That's a direct quote. In the crowd a few feet from the senator when when uh, the shooting started, and uh, this was to give himself the bona fides, I guess, to say that he could judge my work. And then um, after giving me this bad review, the very next day I got a call from a friend of mine who's in the FBI, and he said, geez, I saw that horrible review about your book in the Washington Post yesterday. I said, I said yeah, you know, I was checking the records. This guy wasn't even among the 77 people who, was, who were listed by the LAPD as eyewitnesses, in the, even in the room, just being in the room. And he said, well, happy birthday. And I said, happy birthday. It's not my birthday. And he says, it's not. He said, well, turn on your fax machine. I'm going to send you some. So the guy sends me the uh, interview, the official FBI interview with this guy, this distinguished British historian who claimed that he was right there a few feet from the senator when the shooting started. And it turned out he was outside in the parking lot. Wow. And according to his own interview with the FBI. And then I had found a book that he had written about uh, uh, 1968, political melodrama, I think it was called, where he was uh, saying that he was nowhere near the crime scene at the time of the shooting. So he had given three different versions of where he was. So I had some fun with the Washington Post responding to that, but all my other reviews were pretty doggone good. And uh, it was probably the best book I've written. It's not my favorite book, but it was certainly my best book, I think. Well, I, I do find it interesting, too, that, uh, you know, Sirhan Sirhan gives you all this information and, and gives you kind of his his guilt. Uh, whereas even to this day, if you watch the probation hearings, uh, the, the parole hearings, you watch those uh, on, on YouTube or you see them on the news, you know, he's still trying to perpetrate this theory that uh, he probably wasn't involved, that he feels like, right. you know, he, he wasn't part. And somehow he let that guard down. For you, I mean, he did. He did, and he was. He was. Let me tell you, he was pissed off when he saw my book. When he saw what I had done, that I had turned around because he. He. I mean, I even say in my book, I said, Sirhan gave me the look. Like, what's he going to do? I mean, he wasn't too concerned about it. Here, I was getting into it with him, and I mean, I'm six foot four and like two hundred and forty-five pounds. I mean, Sirhan is like five foot. Four. Four, five foot five, and like 135. This guy, he got so mad at me, squared off on me at the in the prison visitation room. Wow. And um, he, uh, but he, but he sat down and calmed down because I think he, 
I think he he kind of said to himself, "What's Moday going to do? He's going to say, I, I, you know, I'm guilty after all the evidence he's come up with saying that I'm not." I, I, and, and that's why it was it was it was it was it was not rough for me to admit I was wrong because I was clearly wrong. I mean, I had to go back and see how the evidence, why the evidence appeared as it did. For instance, the three the three test the three bullets that were retested in 1975. This has been a mystery for years and, and had brought a lot of second gun conspiracy theorists into this, and, and it had certainly intrigued me. I certainly used it on my list. What was the reason? Why couldn't they? Why could these three slugs be matched with each other, but they couldn't be matched with Sirhan's gun? 